Hey, this is Ted Leonard from Enchant. We've got a new album coming out called The Great Divide. Look for it in, uh, there's no stores that have it anymore, but look for it where you look for things like CDs. <laughs> and you've been listening to Moro.com. Well, there was, there was no decision to stop you know, playing or writing together, it was mostly just <clears throat> everyone just got busy with their own life, you know. Um, Sean had kids, my kids were at an age where they needed more help, and Doug and Ed just were busy. Mostly, you know, mostly it fell on Doug, because as the core writer, to, uh, to find enough time to pursue it again. But we, we were all just working our jobs and living our life and playing a lot of music and other places but um uh, but yeah it was just there was no decision to stop we just didn't every year would go by and as time does sometimes and um so yeah I'm happy to be doing it again though Nobody knows the ocean of life. um well in my case i contributed two complete songs that i had written about three or four years ago that when I wrote, I was really thinking of Enchant. Um, one of which was more so, Life in a Shadow has that sing-songy intro, the ba da 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 and it's a very um, proggy melody. And then it kind of relaxes into this groove-oriented, almost pop song, almost. Um, the other one that I, I don't even know that I was writing for Enchant necessarily, it was more for me. It was just heavier... It was more like straight ahead, balls to the wall rock, uh, but it was in seven, so it's still prog. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's and um, and then the the other guys I know they were getting together frequently and working on music together. They they really I think this this album more so than any other album was more of a group effort. You know, those guys got together and wrote, bashed out a lot of music. So <clears throat> I wasn't involved at all. I, I live further away from them now. I used to live very close, and now I live about two hours away. So I didn't attend the practices. And plus, I'm so busy with Spox and everything else, Transatlantic. And... Mm, no. I mean, the, the Great Divide is... Uh, a word picture in English. I don't know if there's a French translation. Probably is. There's one. But it's but it's just um, the song itself talks about the division between men and women, and then man and God, and sometimes man and his own his own aspirations or goals, um, you know, or peace. Actually, the three verses are about love, God, and peace, finding peace, you know, and this and how much we struggle to get to that other side and. Um, and whether and whether it's even possible to know something as intangible as peace or God and women they're pretty intangible sometimes too <laughs> harder even harder to understand sometimes no but uh, but um, yeah so it wasn't necessarily but it also seemed really appropriate because there's this huge divide of time between the two albums and but yeah, there's nothing about it was not it's definitely not about any kind of band member there was there has been no drama in that band in the last, you know, seven years, and then really, for a long time, it's just we all get along. We're all friends, you know. We hang out when, you know, if I can make it to, you know, when a kid has a birthday, we're we're friends. So it's it's all good. I mean, obviously, the production is is better on this album. I think. Um, but I think, musically, the the biggest difference is Bill is more prominent. Um, the keyboards are more prominent on this album for sure. He's his presence on this album is way more than Tug of War. And of course, Think of an Eye, he wasn't even on that album. Um, but on Tug of War, the the keyboards kind of took a back seat. And this album, there's definitely some spots where you're going, holy crap! And I, none of us really. I mean, I always knew Bill was good, but um, until he played on Thought Chamber, 
on our last album, I had no idea how, how good he was, honestly. Because he's kind of a shredder when it comes to uh, fusion stuff. And mm. that's perfect for Thought Chamber because it has like a little bit of a jazz influence. And, um, and so he's doing all these crazy diminished, you know, runs and stuff and really cool stuff. And, and he, really tore, he really cut loose on this album. And there's a couple moments where it's like, there's a couple songs where, I, and I'll, I'm not going to say which ones, but where I was kind of going, ah, I don't know about this song. And then it gets to the end, and now I'm giving it away, and it's just like the, the keyboard solo makes the whole song for me. Um, up to that point, I wasn't really thrilled about that song. So, but, uh, but yeah, the keyboard solo at the very end is just is really cool. Where did the time go? Only seems like yesterday. So yes, um, Circles. Um, I think circles is more, it was just kind of about the feeling like you're <clears throat> kind of spinning your wheels. I don't know if that's a good metaphor, and, but you feel like you're trying really hard and getting nowhere. And then within an inch is, is specifically about when Doug um, almost died way back before he was, before Enchant was even a band. He was working for his dad and, and um, you know what a caterpillar is? A big... Uh Tractor? Yeah. Yeah, well, the whole thing spilled over, crushed his hips. Yeah, so he was at, he was at death's door, actually. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that song was kind of about that. In fact, um, there was a series of songs that he was thinking about making. He was at first considering making a concept album mm -hmm. at, and possibly even as a solo release. And that was one of, part of his life story mm -hmm. was... That look. And then the Great Divide, like I said, we've already talked about that. All Mixed Up was part of a series of songs that I wrote. I have about eight or nine songs. Um, life in the Shadow was part of that series of songs, too, that were all about going through a divorce. <laughs> a very sad bunch of songs. Hiding Out, um, mm. which is a Spock Beard song, was part of that same series of songs. Yeah, I wrote like nine songs in like two months. And uh, hiding out was one of them. It was actually the last one I wrote, mm -hmm. and um, and then but but all mixed up and life in a shadow were about going through the divorce. All mixed up is a little more obvious. Didn't didn't know what I wanted to do. Didn't know if I wanted to try to make it work with my ex-wife or go forward with the woman who I loved just that much more <laughs> and uh, a lot more. And so that's what that song's about. It's pretty odd. And once you know what that's about, it's, the lyrics make a lot more sense, probably. You know, that's, that's a, one of the songs Doug wrote, and he probably would be able to talk more about that. Um, I think it is a, an, about relationships and everything. So Life in a Shadow um, is a song I wrote, and originally it was about something completely different than what it's about now. It was, it was about... And actually, I'm not even going to go into that. What the song is about now, I totally changed the lyrics <laughs> right before, and he's heard the original version. Um, what the song is about now is <clears throat> how shitty my dad was. I have like five Enchant songs that are about a despicable man. Or despicable. What was it for your dad? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, um, read the lyrics now, and now it'll make a lot more sense. But, um, uh, well, actually, Shell of a Man was about my grandpa who died of... Um, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Um, what's the other one? There's Despicable. There's Seeds of Hate. That's a totally my dad's song. <laughs> Never thought about that, actually. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, Life in a Shadow is just kind of... I kind of pictured what, what's it going to be like when he passes away and, and we never really had a relationship. We never really reconciled that. And so I pictured... Mm -hmm. Tried to write a song from the perspective of like being at his funeral almost. And I'm trying to get out of the shadow of the fact that he was an idiot. But anyway, um, I, okay. So next, "Deserve to Feel" is another one I wrote lyrics to, and that's about everyone deserves love, you know. And um, it was it was another song that was a result of going through a divorce. I think you know. It's, of, of being able to, of having to make a choice. Uh, I, sometimes you don't feel like you you deserve it, <laughs> or you feel like it's more important that my kids are happy than that I'm happy. And to some extent, that's probably true. But it's, at the same time, we all deserve to feel that passion and that fire. And that's something I just I never really had for 
my first wife, and uh, and I do for my my current one. Um, here and now, <laughs> here and now, I have no idea. <laughs> well, I can actually answer, but I don't know if it's What's, pointless. It's well, about remind time. me of a f couple of phrases, and I'll try to answer. The, the thing is that. Don't tell me about here and now. About time passes by. Yeah, time yeah, being yeah. your enemy. It's 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 a lot like it's, my enemy. Yeah, it, 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 that was the point. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about time flying by when you see your children grow mm -hmm. and oh, see right. and thinking about the, you know when you when you held them in your arms and when they first got born mm -hmm. and stuff like this. Am I correct? Yeah, might, that's right. Be, that's totally be. right. I just couldn't even remember the lyrics at that point. Prognosticating the lyrics are very confusing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I probably, it's probably the most natural, because I am that voice. And I, I, and I don't think I really changed my singing much for Spock's Beard, but I think I dialed back the big rock a little bit. You know, in Thought Chamber, the music screams for big rock, so the vibrato's, yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> and in Chant, it's, it's, it's more what I would do naturally. So there's a little bit of big rock to it, but, uh, and then Spock's Beard, I, I almost try to avoid that kind of vibrato altogether, just because it's like it doesn't fit, you know, with with retro progressive music. So, I, I it's subtle differences between the three bands, but there is definitely a difference. But yeah, I mean, there's no <clears throat> there's no uh, specific dates being discussed yet. But I think the idea is that we'll be planning uh, to try to make something happen in the spring. I can't tour anymore for the next, you know, five six months because this year's already. I've already had to take ten weeks off of work this year. So any more, and I'd be worried about losing my job. So, so I, I had to tell the guys, okay, we can't, we can't tour until spring. But that's probably good. Let the album get out there and let the. Yeah, you know, hopefully a few people share it with a friend and maybe we'll get some people to show up at the shows, so.